Alrighty, it's Thursday, so we're going to talk more about trees, and then we've got break next week, and then the following Tuesday on 3.5 we'll do midterm, we'll have lab on trees, and then midterm review, right, and then midterm on 3.7, it's from 3.7 up to 3.12, take it whenever you want, um, should should be pretty pretty smooth, that's the goal, um, I, trying to memorize stuff is silly, so um, you just need to go know where to find your information, and we should be in pretty good shape. So, um, as we were working with trees, we looked at this idea of them being a hierarchical structure. Let me go close that door, sorry. All right, so this tree, right, being this hierarchical structure that has the levels, right, or generations. So we talk about trees having depths and height, right? The depth of a given item in a tree is how many levels down it is, right? The height of a tree is from where it is, how far down does it go, right? So of a tree, the items with the highest depth will be the same as the height of the tree. Right, so you have to find which item has the highest depth. So we looked at, hey, how do we calculate our height? Well, it's the max of all of our children's heights, plus one for us. Right? So this way we sort of can add up as we go down, rather than having to go all the way down and then have them count back up. Um, so it's a, a little awkward. Um, not, not the best way to try and calculate these sorts of things, but it's all doable. Um, so this is the generic tree where you can have n number of children. There's no limit to the number of children that we have. Um, and then one of the fun things we saw when we started working with our linked lists, we wanted to have that iterator. So how can I get every item out of my, my structure? So if we wanted to get every item out of a tree, there's essentially two main ways we do it. So you will go level by level by level. So it'll give you all the items at this level, give you all the items at this level, give you all the items at this level, give you all the items at this level. That's a, a breadth first, right? So we're going wide first. Every level we go super wide, every level we go super wide. So you get like, here's where the depth is zero, here's where the depth is one, here's where the depth is two, here's where the depth is three. So we could loop through that sort of way and give the items back in that order if we wanted. So that's one way to go about it. Another way is a depth first. So we'd go as far down as we can, as many generations as we can, and give that item. Um, so there's just two different ways to go about it. So they make a little bit more sense once we start looking at the binary tree. Let me go find, a, which I think I have in my downloads here. Uh, data structures, there it is. Okay, yes, yeah, so we looked at height here being a little bit better for this one. And then the next kind of tree we're looking at is a binary tree. So this is a very specific type of tree that you have at most two children, a left and a right. So a lot of things will use binary trees when we start looking how we can store data. Uh, this is a pretty common structure to have only a left or right child. The n number of children gets to be a little awkward sometimes. So when we look at a binary tree, the idea is you have zero, one, or two children. You can do all sorts of silly things with it here. This is them representing a math problem with the binary tree. I don't recommend this. This sounds awful. But you could, right? Um, trying to figure this out. So really, opera operators always have children, right? And operands, the numbers, have no children, right? So there's this idea, if you have no children, you're a leaf on the tree. There's another, another name for it, because you have no children. Other than that, you're not a leaf. Um, so if you'd like, instead of writing this, you could write it this way and confuse people, but sure. Right, so three plus one happens first, it's in parentheses, then times three. I don't know, just silly ways of going about it here. But things that we do, right, where trees are subtrees. Right? So we, we have this recursive definition. So every child is another tree. So when we think about a binary tree, we can say, hey, give me the left of this position, my left child. Give me the right of this position, or give me the sibling of this position. So we're going back to this idea of it being positional, where we have the positional linked list, so I can hold on to a position and use that. So when our quick little demo here, we didn't really use positions, we just had them being a, a tree. So I had the entire tree itself. 
you don't always want to give them full access to just the tree there. Sometimes you want to give them a position that they can work through and then add items to that position um, there if they need to. So if you wanted to write a class for a binary tree, and really this is probably like a positional binary tree. Um, positional binary tree, right? We would have us being a tree and we'd be able to give the left of a position, the right of a position. So if I have a left child, I give you the left child. If I have a right child, I give you the right child. And then you can ask for the sibling. So I'd go to my parent and then get the other child out from that sibling here. Um, so he starts with this abstract base class, this idea that here's what the methods, the functions look like, but we're not going to write them yet because you can do it different ways. Uh, and again, I find this a little awkward to, because there's not a whole lot here. Right? So binary tree is a tree with a left, a right, a sibling, a child. Right? So if you want to iterate over the children, you can say, okay, hey, if left is not none, I'll yield the left. If right is not none, I'll yield the right. Remember, the yield is the keyword that just says, hey, wait here until you ask for the next one. It's kind of cool. Like it suspends its operation and just kind of waits for you to ask for the next one here. So we can say, hey, for child in children, do something. And in this case, there's just two of them, right? If we had n number of children, we could yield each child one at a time. And next, then when it asks for the next one, and asks for the next one, and asks for the next one, we could give it to you that way. Right? Just a, a way you could do that with that yield keyword is pretty fun. So when you think of binary trees, there's lots of fun math that goes into these because at most, you double the number of nodes every level. And if you think of doubling, you're thinking of powers of two because we're all fans of math here in data science and have taken lots of math classes. So if you have one node at level zero, you have two to the zero. If you have two nodes at level one, you have two to the one. If you have three nodes at level, I'm sorry, four nodes at level two, you have two to the two and on and on and on, right? So the number of nodes, the number of trees, right, subtrees, whatever you want to call them here, at each level is two to that power because we're doubling every time. So you can kind of quickly get lots of nodes in a tree without a lot of depth, right? Thanks to powers of two, right? I think that's pretty straightforward. That's why we like powers of two, because it grows really nicely. So he gives this fun math, which is a bunch of nonsense, but sure. Um, so if you want to remove items from a tree, that can be tricky. So if you have one child, it's pretty easy to remove yourself from the tree. You just put your child in your place. If you have no children, you just take yourself out and make your, you're just gone because you had no children. There's nothing to replace. If you have two children, it's really tricky because you don't know what to do with them because you can't put just one in your place because the child that you're putting in this place might already have two children. So that gets to be hard to replace at this point here. We'll, we'll look at how we can implement them. So um, one easy way to implement this is with a linked structure. We love doing links with our linked lists. So we could make a linked list with our binary tree. So we could have a binary node that has a bunch of stuff, but it's, it's not so bad. So we had front and back, and we did a doubly linked list, right? Where we had next and previous. And so each node knew what came after it, and each node knew what came before it. With the binary tree, you know who your parent is. We, we sort of started doing that linked idea with our binary tree. So, okay, hey, I can add my parent. Right? I've got a link to my parent here. What the binary tree does then, instead of saying, hey, I have a list of children, I have a left child and I have a right child. So I'll have a, li a link to my left child and I have a link to my right child. And I'll also link to my parent. So we have three links. And then we also have to store that actual piece of data that we're trying to store. Because right? trees should have some sort of data somewhere here. Right? So with our positional, this will be a linked binary tree. Right? We're going to have um, an inner class for a node. Oh, what a linked, oh, we'll just call it a node. Tree node, binary tree node. I'm trying to make it clear here. So the binary tree node, right? we're going to need the data that it stores. We're going to need to know the parent. We're going to need to know the left. We're going to need to know the right. Or left child and right child. I'm a child. Left child and right child. And these can probably be nuns as a default until we know otherwise, right? Keep that pretty easy to use. Like defaulting in things are none. 
So self.data is the data. Self.parent is the parent. Self.left child is the left child. And self.right child is the right child. So we're setting up the node. Right? So we're going to use these nodes here in our binary tree. So we define our init for our linked binary tree. Probably need some sort of data here. Right? We're going to say self.root. So the root of a tree is where it starts. So each tree is its own root, but it can be part of a bigger tree. Right? If you have child trees, it's a tree rooted at their data, but they're also part of your tree. So root will be a new node. So it'll be a binary tree node, uh, positional binary tree node, given the data with nuns, right? Because I'm, I'm empty. I don't have a parent. I don't have a left. I don't have a right. I'm just a brand new tree, right? So we could do those. So I'm also going to need a position class that I can give back to so whoever's using my code here, right? The position wrapper is the public piece we give them that says, here's how you interact with me. I'm gonna give you positions. You can add something to my left, you can add something to my right, you can get my parent out, but you can do things with positions. We want them to use, we don't want them to use nodes. That's how we're storing it indirectly, um, how we're storing it with our abstract details here. You don't need to know the details. We'll figure that out. But we'll give you a position, and position will give you these public functions, and they will do what I told you they'll do. And you can actually make trees that are not linked. And we'll look at that in one next. Oh, thank you. So the position that is not going to change regardless of whether or not we use linked data or another way of storing it here. And hint, it's a list, which is a lot of fun. So we're going to write a position class as well. So we'll make a class for position. And then position right, is pretty much like our other one. It needs to be able to do a bunch of things. Um, so I'm going to go copy that one real quick. So we'll go up to the GitHub. 2001, and let's see, that was our, is it stay? did I not commit the, oh, link, I, did, I forgot to call it week six, I was looking for it there. So with a position, where did it go, that was down at the bottom, right, that was one of the last ones we did. We need to be able to create it, we need to know what the container was, and what node it points to, right, we need to be able to get the data out of it, you need to see if it's equal to the other one. It's not too bad. So we'll do a similar class for position with this one. Right? So it has a container. That'll be the tree that we're in. It'll have the node that it points to, which is the node. Now, because we're going to be giving people positions, right? these are private. We don't want them accessing them directly, but they can get the data out. And we can see if it's equal to itself and if it's not equal to another one. Right. Then our tree structure is going to have these helper functions, right? So like we have these helper functions, oops, right? We could validate a position. Wow, what is it doing? And we can make positions. So our binary tree can validate a position. Uh, if it's container is not self, right? If it's not a position in my tree, not valid. Um, it's, now we, we're not going to have next now, so maybe it was, I think it was um, node.parent is position.node. I think so. I think I'm jumping ahead here, but essentially to make a position or a node invalid, you make it point to itself for its parent, right? Because we don't have the, um, what did we say before, the next was none. I think is what we were marking before is invalid. So we're saying, hey, if the parent points to itself, that's our, our little way of just saying, this one's no longer valid. So if you've removed this position, we'll make that node point to itself, make a little loop, which shouldn't happen with our trees. So that's our indicator for this. So now there are no dummy nodes. So we're just going to make a position out of a node. Sir, yeah. at the top where you had the root, uh, how did how like where we had the root? Uh, yeah, it's like line sixty. Oh yeah. How do you put like self dot root? Because you don't mention it in the brackets at the top. Self root brackets where? I'm sorry. Like in the function, in the, the same function. How come you don't put like root in the function? Which function? 
So like you see, like in the Luxembourg, we have like self dog data, and then yeah. we have data in the backs next to it. Then we have parent in the back it's next to it. Yeah. But with the root, we didn't have root in the back. No, so with so the idea is when you make a new binary tree, you don't need to tell me any sort of other information. The only thing you need to tell me is the data. And I'll make a new tree. So to make a new uh, positional binary tree, I would just say down in my code here, right? We can make a, you know, here's a binary tree, positional binary tree, and I'd give it like 10. I don't have to give it another tree. I don't have to give it another node. I don't have to give it anything else. All I'm going to give it is the data that it's going to store. And from here, then I can start working with it and doing things with it. So here's this piece of data. Um, all right, so we can make position from a given node. So make position is our position class. Position class, I needed the container and the node to point at. So we've got those. We got the node data. Looks good so far. Uh, all right, so we got those ones. We don't add between. We don't before. We don't last. All right, we, we'll get to the iterator in a minute. We'll do that in a little bit. Okay. So we can start doing our position. So ways that they interact with us then, we should be able to add root if we want, create a root for a tree, add left of a position, add right of a position, replace a position, delete a position, attach a tree. This one gets kind of funky. You can say, hey, take a position and then attach some trees as is left and right. Um, that one's a little funny. But so we got our node, we got our position, we got the element, equals, validates, make position. Um, okay, if the node is not none, okay, sure. We can make sure the node is not none. That's fun code here, right? Turn. This is, right, the condensed expression here instead of an if else statement. If node is not none, then we do the thing on the left, otherwise you get the thing on the right. It's just a little funky, um, like a ternary expression, but it's okay. The book uses lots of those, so if it, is it easier doing it following along or is it easier to write it out with an if else? What do you like? So it makes sense? Okay, all right, if, if it makes sense, that's great. That always hurt my head for a little bit here. Um, and it's, it's gonna be none either way, right? Well, so it'll be none if the node is none. If the node is not none, we get a position. If we give it a none node, then you get none back. You get no position back. So like I could try and make a position from my child, my left child. I don't need to check if the left child is none before I try that. So if you want my left child, I'll just make a position for my left child. It might be none. This make position will take care of that for me. Yep. So if you say we want like um, left of the position, so we're going to return. Oh, I'm sorry. So first we're going to validate. So we'll get the node out first. So the node is self dot validate position, and then if that's valid, then we're going to return uh, self dot make position from the node. Actually, we could probably even just do that all in one line if we wanted, right? So get, get the node back out. It might raise a value error as we validate, but that's not up to us to solve, right? You'll have to fix, fix that because you broke it. And then we'll turn that into a make position. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, validate the positions. So that's, the, that's a node. Now we want the left, right? Left child. That makes more sense. So get the node's left child, turn that into a position, right? To get a right of a position, We'll take the right child. To get the parent of a position. Position, there we go. Oops. We'll take our parent. So we just follow those links to grab the next node. Because right? we, no, we have nodes in our tree now that point up, left, and right, essentially. Which is a really weird way to draw trees, because usually we think of trees growing upward. Well, we always draw trees going downward for some reason. I think we always do things backwards with computers. Um, I don't know why, they're just always drawn like that. So you can get any one of the other positions from a given position. So we can traverse the links in a tree very quickly 
Right? It doesn't matter if there's a million items in my tree, I can always find the parent of mine. I can always find the left of mine, the right of mine, super fast. Right? Now, if I've got 50 levels and I want to get from the top to the bottom, it's going to take 50 calls to get the left, to get the left, to get the left, to get the left, 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 going all the way down here. Um, now, some of the fun stuff here that we, I said this math is ridiculous, which is true, um, but when you think about a tree and the fact that it is based on this powers of two, this log keyword pops up here, not keyword, log word pops up here. Right? So if we're filling up our levels here, if I want to store a million items, I'm not actually going to have a whole lot of levels there, right? Two to the whatever, and we're, we're already at a, a million. Right? Two to the 16, and we're at two billion. So I'm not going to even have 16 levels in a tree to store a million things. Just kind of cool to think about. So having to traverse down a bunch of levels doesn't really happen that much because we can store so many items in each level, um, right? So the, the math gets to be important when we look at some of these things. All right, so I can go left. Now I should be able to add items here. Try to root for an empty tree. If the tree's not empty, why would I want to start with an empty tree? That seems weird. I uh, will add left and add right. Okay, nope, that's the wrong one here, this one. So to add left, given a position and the data. Again, we're gonna validate that position. So the node will be that position. And then if we already have a left, we should raise an error, right? So if node.left child is not none, let's raise a value error or something. Already has a left. So you want it to be none. So yeah, we can only add you only add a left child if you don't have a left child. Right? Otherwise we should do some sort of replace or something like that, right? We don't we don't want to let you think you can add a child and I don't know what's gonna to happen to that existing child. That's just a bad metaphor to go down. Um, right, so we can add left. So if we are not none, we do that. Otherwise, we can say node.left child equals, now remember this is another tree. So we're gonna make a, another tree, positional binary tree, given the data. Its parent will be self. So parent is myself. I am its parent. It doesn't have a left child, it doesn't have a right child. Right? But now, I'm that new subtree's parent in the link here, right? So I've set up the left child link, and then they're already automatically going to be linked to me as the parent, because nodes do that. They know, they take that in the in the init, the constructor, right? So I can add left. I can do the same for right. Now again, we're going to check the right child. Already has a right. And then we'll set the right child of my, myself here. I'm the parent here. And then when we're done, we want to return the position of that new child. So we're going to return um, self.make position of the node's right child. I forgot to do that for the left, of the left child. So I'm going to give you back the position of the node you just added, the tree you just added here. So I can add to the left, I can add to the right. We can replace data at a given position. Now, removing it's tricky, right? It's bad if we have two children, it's easy if we have no children. If we have one, we just swap. That one's not so hard. Um, so let's do replace first. So we can uh, replace a position and some data. So I'm gonna have the old data. Oh, first we gotta validate, right? So we'll uh, validate the node. Make sure it's good. And then we're gonna have the old data because we're going to give this back when we're done, is the node.data. And we'll take the node.data, set it to the new data, and we'll return the old data. Right? We replaced it. You gave me the position, I swapped the data at that position. Right? So for delete then, delete a given position. So we can say if my, oh, we got to validate first, sorry. Always got to validate. And then if node.leftchild is not none and node.rightchild is not none, I use a, I don't know, value error or something. Can't delete. Uh, it's two children. Otherwise, now we need to see do I either have one child or do I have no children? Right? So we need to 
get the child out that we do have, or if it's none, then we don't have any. So we can check, we can say, hey, the left child is equal to no.left child. And then if my left child is none, right, then I know I, I have to check the right child. Right? If it's not none, I know I don't have two children. Right, so the else here, I'm going to, I know I have a left child at this point here. So maybe we should start with that one. So if left is not none, we'll start with if we're not none. Then I'm going to swap myself with the left child. Right, so my node.parent, node.parent. Now, I know that I have a parent, but I don't know am I my parent's left child or my parent's right child. Right, if we think about and draw a picture of what we're swapping here. Let's draw a little tree. Right, if I have 10 and 20 and 30, right? There's the parents links. And then this one maybe has, I don't know, uh, 12, 15. This one has, I don't know, 25. So if I tried to delete 20, I can't delete 20. If I tried to delete 15 that has no children, that's easy. I just whack it, it's gone. If I tried to delete 12 that has no children, it's easy. I just whack it, it's gone. If I try and delete 30, it has one child. But does 25, I'm sorry, does 30 know if it's the right of the left child of its parent? Because I'm going to say, hey, put the 25 in my place here. I don't know if I'm the left or the right if I wanted to change any of these links here. Because you're just using the level instead of the node? Yeah. Well, we, we give them the position. So the position we're giving, we say, hey, delete position that has the data of 30. Wow, it just locked up, there it goes. That's just like Microsoft Word. So one thing we could do if to avoid having to change all these links is just replace the data. Just swap my data out, right? It's probably pretty easy. So I'm just gonna swap the data that's there. So I don't actually even need to mess with any of my stuff here. Right, so I'm going to delete the position, so I'll have my old data is the node.data, and then my node.data can equal the left child.data. Right? Grab that. And then we said our way of marking a node is invalid. We'll say my left child.parent is going to equal the left child. Point, have it point to itself. And then I need to remove my left child, so the node.left child will be none. So you're saying that if the parent has only one child, you would replace the parent by the child itself? We would, but I'm just taking the data there and then just cutting the link off. To, otherwise, I'd have to change its parent to my parent, and then I'd have to see, hey, parent, am I your left or right child? And then set your left or right child to my left child to fix the link. Right? So I could either change this link and say, hey, parent, you point to here now, and hey, child, you point to here now. I could, but doing that, has to, I have to do a little more work because I have to ask my parent, am I your left child or am I your right child? So I think this is a little bit quicker. We just swap our data out and I can return the old data. So if the left is not none, I know I have to do the left, right? If the left is none, now I need to see if the right is none. So maybe elif right child, oh, we should get the right child, right? So right child is no dot right child. Right child is not none. If the right's not none, but the left is. I'm doing the same idea here, but now it'll be the right child's data. And then my right child's parent will be the right child. And then my node right child will be none, and I can return the old data. If I don't have any children, right, then I need to go and fix my parent's link. Because I'm gone. So, else. Now I need to see if my self dot, or I'm sorry, my node.parent dot right child is equal to the node. Then my node.parent dot right child is none. Right? Oh, actually, I need the data. So the old data is node.data. 
I guess that's the same in any case here, so we should just save that regardless, right? Regardless of what we're doing. Let's do that. And I can return that once. Let's forget that. Okay, so we'll get the data out. I'm gonna, regardless of left, right, no child, whatever here, we'll return that. All right, so if I'm my parents' right child, I'll set my parents' right child to none. If I'm not my parents' right child, I must be my parents' left child, right? Because they only have two. And you could have checked either one first, right? So if I'm the right, blank the right. If I'm the left, blank the left. And then when I'm done, right, my no.parent. Will they always have a maximum of two children? I'm sorry? Will they always have a maximum of two children? Yeah, with a binary tree, you only will ever have a left or right. So it's a very specialty data structure, but it's pretty common. Um, and then I'm the one we have to mark as invalid, right? Instead of marking my left child, my right child is invalid, I'm gonna mark my, myself, my node is invalid. Point to itself, right? So those are a couple cases we had to work through for deleting a, a position. This is kind of obnoxious, right? That's like a bunch of code here, but it's okay. We'll get to it. All right, so I can replace, I can delete, I can add left, I can add right. We can get the left and right out. Where is it here? We had those um, left, we can get a right. Oh, a sibling. We can get a sibling of a position here, right? So let's do this one here. So let's do siblings. We did left, we did right. Let's do sibling of a position. Find sibling of a position. Now this one's a little bit more complex, right? So first we're gonna validate the node. The node will equal that. So we'll go validate it. And then if I'm my parents left, I wanna give them my parents right. If I'm my parents right, I wanna give them my parents left. Right? So parent will be node.parent. And then if the node is equal to parent.left child, we're going to return uh, self.makePosition of the parent.right child. Right? If I'm my parent's left, give them my right, parent's right. That'd be my sibling. Otherwise, or really, we don't even need the else there, right? Because it's, it's redundant. We can just return the left. And Maybe too, like um, if I don't have a parent, we might also have a problem here, right? So if parent is none, we can just return none, right? If the parent's none, we return none. Otherwise, hey, if we're the parent's left, great, we return, ooh, right of the, okay, so using the position, that's fun. I was using nodes. I think either way is probably fine. So it was reusing the right and left was all. All right, um, we get the sibling out, parent, too many blank lines. Okay, that's all it was. And then children, right? We can just copy paste this one. This one's not too bad. Oh, copy pasting out of this obnox is obnoxious though. That's all right. So then we can yield our children. Let's see, so let's do that uh, I don't know, somewhere over here. Find children of a position. Right, we have children of a position. Uh, so if self.left of the position is not none, we'll yield self.left of the position. Right, and then if the self.right of the position position is not none, we yield self.right of the position. Right, so this is saying, hey, when you ask for my children, if I have a left, I'll give you the left and then I'll wait. If I don't have a left, I just go right on to do I have a right? right? And if all the code runs and I don't give anything back, you still got back none, nothing happened. Right? So we're gonna iterate over the children here, which is pretty fun. So I can iterate over my tree by saying, okay, I'll give you myself and I'll give you my children. But my children also need to do the same thing. I'll give you myself and I'll give you my children. It's kind of a, kind of a lengthy process, uh, but it's recursive in nature, which is fun. 
All right, so we did um, element equals validate make position. Ah, size, that's right, we should be tracking size. So that was our number of items, or size. So we have for this one here. Nope, this one. Self dot, I like number of items. Number of items is zero, and every time we go add something, so when we go add left or add right, we should take our self dot number of items plus one. Self dot number of items plus one. Deleting a node now should take out self dot number of items minus one. Right, and then we can uh, define our length function. Self dot number of items. That's the length. Uh, and I guess when we start a tree, we should probably actually start that at one, shouldn't we? Because we have one item. We said we're now we're now a tree because you gave me some data. So I guess we start at one. Right. Um, oh, root. Yeah. So the root here. We can give you the root of the tree. So we can make a define root. Turn self dot make position of self dot root. Uh, root, and that's probably want to mark that as private. Let me go rename that one here. Factor rename, call that private root. So it shouldn't access it directly. Okay, probably the same with number of items too. I'm feeling bad now. Make that number of items. Where did that go? <clears throat> Refactor, rename, shift F6, that's a weird shortcut. All right, I think it renamed it everywhere, right? Number of items, cool. Number of items. So we can get the parent, we can get the left, we can get the right. Uh, number of children. So the number of children for a given position. Sure, you can do that. Uh, so define number of children, given a position, so we'll validate the position first, right? And then my number of children, or children will equal zero, and then if no dot left child is not none, children plus one, and then if no dot right child is not none, children plus one, Return children. Yeah, just a pretty quick count. Um, adding a root, that's fine, we don't need to do that. Add a left. That sets the left node, okay. And so they just add a little helper here. We, we did our own. Replace is fine. Delete we did. Oh, okay, so they used that number of children function. That's handy. We, we did it the hard way, I guess. Attach the trees, I don't want to worry about that right now. That's okay. So how fast do these things run then? It's actually pretty quick, right? Because we're just navigating links. So the bigger n gets, doesn't really matter. The only thing that's gonna slow it down is to calculate the height here, right? Because I have to look at n items and find the max of the, de the depths. Yeah? What is the difference between the O for D P plus one and O for the so D is our, what is it here? Uh, the depth of a given position plus one. So because it's like counting upward, the further down it is, the more it's gonna be. But it's, so it's not, probably not gonna be linear because trees will hopefully have more and more data at every level. Now, a fun, fun story, right? I, mean, I guess it's not even a story, but um, if I have one, two, Three, four, five, six. Is this a binary tree? No. Does each child have zero or one children? Or zero, zero one or two children? Zero. One. Oh, it's one. Well, so a binary tree will have a tree, and each tree will have zero, one, or two children as a left or a right. So is this a binary tree? Yeah. Yes. Oh, they have one children. Yeah. So this is a terrible binary tree. So you're going to have a bunch of levels because you've made it badly. That's on you, right? Users can do dumb things. So if they want to only make rights, they can do that. Now they essentially have a linked list. 
looks terrible. Yes. Yeah, they made a linked list out of our tree. Like, okay, sure. So in this case, the depth will be really, really, really big. Most trees won't look like this, and we're going to look later. There's things we can do to trees to keep them in more of a balanced form. So we don't end up with 50 gazillion levels where we try and pack stuff in. We just we don't know how to do that yet. Or it hasn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to do that yet because there's no rule for how stuff should be in our tree. We'll look at ways we, that trees are made to store stuff in certain ways. We'll get to that. What's that trees for? Storing hierarchical data. These belongs to this, these belongs to this, which belongs to this. Yeah. Yep. So it's not a list where order matters. Right? It's not about an order. It's about this hierarchical relational sort of data, right? With children and parents. So I can have a file, the line is in the file with my file. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, so we should do depth and height then, right? So I think that was the only ones we were missing. So we had that up in our other trees here. Let's see. So depth. Oh, we already had, right? That was pretty easy. So the depth then would be of a given position, though. So depth of a position. So we're going to have to validate the node. Right? And then it's no longer self now. So it's uh, oh, uh, current is the node. And while current's parent is not none, move current up, keep increasing depth, return depth. Oh, we never returned depth in that one, did we? Oops. We should probably return that value when we're done. Or did I just miss my copy paste? No, I didn't. So return depth. How did that work then? Oh, we kept calling height recursively. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So we can do depth of a given position, and then we can define height of a given position. Right. Um, we need, no, so I'm sorry, height is not of a given position. That's just the height of a tree. So the number of levels? Yeah, of the tree rooted here, right? So that was the max of whatever we did here. The number of levels above it? Below it. The depth is the number above you. Height is how many are below you. Oh, okay, okay. So now we don't have um, length of you have children. For every node, if you sum them up the height and the depth, you get a total level of the tree, right? The, the maximum level of the tree, or the height of the tree, is the max depth of your nodes, of all the nodes' max depth. Um, Let's see, all right, so if we have no children, oops, that was no good. No, I don't want children. All right, so the height then of our tree will be, let's see, so we want the length of self dot root dot is it children? Where is it? Kid children? Number of children for the given position? If self dot number of children of self dot root is zero, right? Because the number of children will just give me how many children I have here. If that's zero, I'm returning zero. If not, I'm going to return the max of for child in self dot children and then height. Where's our children? No, this should give us the left and the right position. That's right, so those are positions. Shoot, so how do we get the height? Is there a position, not a tree? Can you Yeah, it's just not gonna run right now because I've got the wrong type here. So there's no height for that. Did he, he didn't write that one for me, did he? That's a bummer. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Let's see. So I could just go. Max of. 
I can just give it two items, right? So I can take my, oh, but I don't want it to be none. That's pretty good. Where is it here now? So height. I think that's why he had the helper height. That's what he had. He had up in the, this abstraction stuff is annoying because all of his base classes here, sorry. So we had the original height back with this one here with a regular tree. It was this height two of a position. Okay, so it took position as a, there it is. So you could take the height of a position if you wanted. So we'll say, hey, position equals none. And then if position is none, position will equal self.root. Then we get the number of children of that position. Because right, we got the position to work with, and then we want the other one here. So that was going to be, oh, just return. That's right. So return self dot private height of the position. Fine. Height of a position. All right. Where was his height to this one here? Because this one takes positions now. All right, so if we have no children, so if self dot number of children of the position is zero, we return zero. Otherwise, we return one plus the max of child uh, self dot height of the child for child in self dot children of the position. Oh my goodness. All right, so for every child that that position has, get its height, which is the one plus. This is the recursive function here. Eventually, when we get to having no children, or this, he checks is leaf. He has a function for is leaf. It'll tell you if you have any children or not, when we get back a zero. So we're gonna add up one plus all of our children ones, 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 ones. Eventually we'll get a zero and we'll stop recursing. And then we add up all those ones. Does that part make sense? This private height. That way we don't need the, um, the public function doesn't do the recursion here. The private function does it for us. And we'll say, hey, maybe you want to give me a position. If not, I'll just assume it's the root of a tree when you ask for height. So you can get that height of a different position if you want. All right, I think we got the links in here. So I should be able to take my binary tree then um, and get a position out. So my root is going to be my binary tree, binary tree dot root. And I can take my binary tree. I can say add left of the root. Or no, I'm sorry, add left will add 10 to the, oh, I'm backwards. To the root is the position. And let's add 10. Oh no, let's add, uh, what do we have, like five. Now my binary tree, add right of the root, we'll add 15. I should get 10 with five and a 15 for my children. Right? And then I can get those positions, right? So this could be the left would equal that. This would be the right would equal that. And then you can go add more items here. So my binary tree, I can add to the, to the right. Um, I'm sorry, let's say of the right then. All right, so the binary tree is the tree structure. Everything else is going to be positions that we're working with. Those are the public positions that I want people to work with and have and reference, hey, this is where you are in the tree. I don't, they don't need to get back each individual like subtree there if they don't want to. They could, but we only really need the one tree because the single tree lets you add left, add right, and do all those things from there. So you got to write a 15, maybe we had like 25 or something. All right, we're doing good. So do the basic binary trees. The next fun thing we can do, oh my goodness, are we gonna have enough time? We might not have enough time for all of this. That's okay. Um, these get fun. This was the link 
You know what? I think we'll save the um, array-based tree for lab. This might make a, a fun enough lab, and there's something we can work on. So the idea here is if I know the structure of the tree and how every level doubles here, what I can do, instead of having to store all of these links, I can store it as a list. Right, so if I have a list here, I have one position, right? This is two to the zero, and I have two positions. This is two to the one has a one and two, and I have four positions. It's two to the two, right? It has four, and then I'm going to have eight positions, and on and on. So in a list, then I know what level you're in based on where you are, with some fancy arithmetic, right? So at index zero, index one and two, index three, four, five, and six. Right? I know what, what level you're in here based on what your index number is. And I can even find your siblings based on your index number. Or I can find your parent based on your index number. I can find your children based on your index number. Because it's all arithmetic. Yeah. So like if it's five and six, the parents, it's true. So we had, um, yeah, so doing this in the tree form, right, would be we had zero, one, and two. And we had three and four, we had five and six. Yep. So you can store all that information one level at a time. Right? And this one and then that one. Right? So each level takes up the next set. I don't know if those arrows make it any better or not. So we can do the arithmetic then, right? Where your left child is two times u plus one, or your right child is two times u plus two. Your index number. Right? This idea of this level numbering is super fun. So we can find each of them based on their level, or we can floor them, right, of your uh, level minus one divided by two to find your parent. Right? So whatever index of that is, right, take away one divided by two, floor it. Or integer division. Right? We'll we'll remove the decimal place here. So we can see, hey, if my index was five or six, right? So five minus one is four. Floor divided by two is two. Six minus one is five. Five divided by two, integer division by two is still two. That math checks out. Three and four, right? Three minus one or four minus one, I get two or three. Floor divided by two, floor divided by two, and one and one. So someone's really smart thought of this. Hey, I can store it in an array if I want. Now, this is not going to be very efficient if you end up with one of these binary trees because you've got a bunch of empty spots here, a bunch of nuns, because I have a ton of levels. But the next thing we're going to look at when we get into um, doing having more fun with trees is priority queues. Priority queues are a special kind of tree that force it to be in a sort of structure that maximizes the number of items in each level. So it's a very efficient way of storing it because remember links are a little slow to have to traverse all your links all the way down. So if we can put it in an array, it works out pretty quick for us. So, and we'll look at those performance trade-offs as we go. So I think that's probably pretty good. We'll save um, the array-based list for, for lab. It'll be a fun lab exercise. Um, and then we gotta do traversals, but we can talk about those after. So you can do um, post order, in order, breadth first, depth first. These ones are fun. Um, different traversals of trees. So we'll talk about those ones as well. I think we'll probably save that for uh, maybe the Q week. We'll have a little bit of time for that. All right, so we've got a break for a week. The next project wasn't going to be due until March 12th. Right? So that is more than two weeks away. So pretend next week doesn't exist. Right? And then it's a week from Tuesday when we get back. We'll have some time to work on that project, okay? Yeah, so the projects are due until 12th. The 12th, yep. So the Tuesday after we get back from break. Because so the idea was you had two weeks to work on it. We started it on Tuesday, but we were pretending the week of break doesn't exist. So you have two weeks minus the break week. We appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully you can go have some fun. Uh, and We'll see what the weather does because it's kind of crazy. <laughs> It's been really nice. Yeah, <laughs> super weird for, for yeah. winter, but you know, it's what it is. Uh, we're supposed to go to camp coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend. And usually we sled. 
It's like winter camp, but I don't know what we're going to do. The early summer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and I'll post a quiz for um, trees. That's right. I got to post my trees. Trees quiz. Trees quiz. All right. Um, I'll post that one for you later. Let me do it a week after break. So we'll have time to work on that one. Okay? All right. It's been fun. I will see you folks uh, a week and a half then.